All right, so welcome back everybody. This video, if you recall from some previous videos on my channel, we looked at whenever you downloaded images, some things you can do to prep images to go onto a website. So today what we're gonna do is we are actually going to take that next step and take a couple of cat graphics and add them to our website. So what I did was I went out to pixabay.com and I downloaded some cat pictures. Now, before I do anything else, one thing I've never liked about uh, just random downloading from the internet as far as the file naming schemas is how a lot of them will add like all of these different numbers here. I want to keep things simple here, so I'm just going to click or you can right click and rename. I'm going to call this cat underscore one and then cat underscore two. What I'm doing here is, so I'm in my downloads folder. I'd really encourage you when you are getting images together to work on your website. If you remember, and I'll grab my magnifier and we'll zoom in over here. Remember that you have your site definition going on here. So what I need to do here is from the downloads folder, I want to get these two files into my web, website folder here. Now, there's two ways that I can do that. I could drag and drop directly into the folder here. So for instance, I could take, you know, cat one, drag and copy it directly into the folder like that. But I'm gonna go ahead and delete that for a second. And let's come back out here and actually go to where our folder is externally. So I'm going to grab my working folder. So here's my working folder that again, all I have in here is just my index document, what we're seeing here in Dreamweaver. And let's go ahead and come back to my downloads folder. When your website is small enough as far as content requirements are concerned, a lot of times Yes, starting out, I do encourage students, it might just be easiest to put everything in a single website folder. So my website folder is called Dreamweaver Continued. As you get more content though, one thing you're going to see is people like to organize the websites in folders. For an example here, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to generate a brand new folder and for instance here, I'm just going to call it IMG or images, you know, short for images. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put cat1 into the images folder, but cat2 in my base Dreamweaver continued folder. Because I want to demo also kind of what can happen with breaking your uh, project here. So again, I'm going to go ahead and grab that cat1 file and move it to images and the cat too. I'm just going to move it right into the folder there. Now, when I do it that way, I'm working outside of the Dreamweaver environment here. It hasn't been reflected yet in Dreamweaver. But if I come back in to Dreamweaver here and we come back in, it might take a second, but Dreamweaver will refresh that site definition to reflect what you did externally to the content. So, okay, so now you can see here, you have that cat graphic. You also have the images folder with the cat graphic in it. So now we're ready to go ahead and add an image to our website. So we're gonna go ahead here. I'm gonna do a file save, place my cursor. I'm gonna put it after my little list here. And we're gonna go back to that insert panel next to the file panel. And if you had noticed, we do have the option up here at the top for an image document. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose the image. And this is a nice setup here. Because I have everything defined for the Dreamweaver website, because I moved those images in there, Dreamweaver knows that they're in there. So I'm gonna grab cat2. We'll start with cat2 here and say, okay. Now, if you recall from last class, or I'm sorry, the last video, though I guess last class, the last module, we went into Photoshop and we edited this image. The reason was, was because of the fact of file size. Now, you do have 
properties specific to the image. And I wanted to hold off on showing that to you until after that first module to familiarize you with images and graphics and working with them. So let's take a moment here. I'm going to magnify and let's take a look at how that properties panel has changed because of the image being placed. So here what you have now down in properties is you can see you have your cat graphic and then you have all these brand new options relating to your op to your image here. A couple of which is the width and height of the graphic. So I could actually come in, click and select my graphic and resize it on the fly there if I want. I'm going to do a quick control Z though because I don't want to do that. And you can see that you can toggle the size constraints. You can also see here what is called SRC. You hover over that, it's a source file of image. This is a shorthand for uh, source. We can also, in the next video that I'm going to do, just to kind of make these a little bit more bite size, you have linking options. So maybe we want to use this to link to this cat that's being adopted out in the web somewhere. We can create a link with that. The other thing that I really want you to pay attention to, though, is because you're working in the Adobe Suite, is this edit item right here, where you can actually go in and see that it has the Photoshop icon. So you can actually, if you want to, you can work backwards. Let me zoom back out. If you decide, I just want to get my image in place and then make edits to it, I can click on the Photoshop icon and it'll open Photoshop for me specific to this graphic here. So maybe I say I do want to come in and change that image size and maybe I want to do like 600 by 398. Tell it OK. And what I'll do here just real quick so you can see how much changes you can do while it's still connected here is let's actually go under image. Oh, we'll do curves real quick, maybe give it a little bit more punch as far as the highlights and shadows, say OK, and fantastic. So now we'll go ahead and just save. And we're going to go ahead. Sometimes what I encourage students to do, especially if you're making some big changes here, is go ahead and save a PSD document. If you're just wanting to overwrite what you have, then you can go ahead and just go to export and choose export as. And in this case, because we're working with a JPEG, we want to make sure that we choose the JPEG from the dropdown and say export. Now, the only drawback that you're going to run into here is you are going to have to go and find your CAT2 graphic again, or whatever graphic you're working with. You're going to say, yes, I want to replace it. And then I'll minimize here a second and come back in. Now, when you return to Dreamweaver, once you've made the edits to your cat2.jpg, an error that you might see, and I like to point this out to students, is down back in that properties panel, if you had tried preemptively to resize the graphic, but then you decided in Dreamweaver you'd resize it instead, you're going to get this little uh, no symbol here. We need to click that so that it will allow it to go back or what Dreamweaver considers reverting back to the original state, which is the new state that we created in Photoshop. So if I go ahead and click that, there you can see now we're seeing the new graphic that we made in Photoshop. So that's one way that you can add an image directly into your document here. Now, on to the second portion of this little mini lecture here. So we've added a graphic into our website. But let's say for sake of argument, you decide at some point, okay, I actually don't want that cat2 graphic to be outside of the images folder. I'd like to be a little bit more organized. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the cat2 graphic into the image folder. Now, if we do that while we are in Dreamweaver by clicking and dragging, you're going to get a nice little update files note and you can say update that way it doesn't break anything 
the link stays the same whenever you preview your project, say in Chrome. Oop, I'll go ahead and say yes to save. Everything stays the same. Now then, this is where folks kind of get in trouble whenever they're new to, whoops, didn't mean to click that. Whenever they're new to creating websites is you'll be external and say, you know, you're working here outside of Dreamweaver, but you realize I want the, you know what? I changed my mind. I actually want cat two back in the base folder here for whatever reason. So now when I come back into Dreamweaver and click, you see what happens there. You get that broken image link and we've all seen that on the net. And if I go into Chrome and try to preview, you see now that I've got that broken link. If you are going to make changes to locations of your files, be it an image, be it a HTML document in the future here shortly, be it a CSS document, be it any form of video file, audio file, etc. You want to make those changes using the files panel. Photoshop, or I'm sorry, Dreamweaver will update those things for you. If you go outside and start making changes outside of the folder, now you're going to start running into problems here. So I'm going to go ahead and put that back just so our website functions again. So I like to demonstrate so that you can also see what a broken web page looks like. Or in our case, we would say in web terms what a broken image link looks like. You see that you know that either a maybe you deleted the image and it no longer exists or b you moved the image outside of the dreamweaver environment and now when you come back into dreamweaver dreamweaver can't find it so those are some things to be careful of whenever you are adding and placing additional information as far as your images go so one of my suggestions at this point is practice just making pages with images on them. Go change them in Photoshop if you so choose, and then go ahead and set them up so that you can actually make your own images.